Uh, so I'm Christophe Pazuk, as uh, it was mentioned. I, I'm not an economist like you. Uh, I'm not even a scholar. I'm not, I don't belong to the university. I've been a sailor for 41 years. And uh, after these 41 years, I had to leave uh, the ships. Unfortunately, I was very sad about that, but uh, that's life. And I joined the university. And in the, in the university, I joined uh, this uh, uh, insti Ocean Institute, which aims to uh, uh, <coughs> promote interdisciplinarity in the ocean sciences within Sorbonne University. Sorbonne U University was ranked third university in the, wor in the world by uh, uh, the Shanghai uh, uh, ranking for the ocean sciences. So it's uh, 1,500 scientists working on the ocean from geography, history, uh, 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 paleontology, and physics, and, and uh, uh, um, biology, many sorts of, of biology and, uh, and ecology. So this is my job. This is my new job. I'm very happy with, uh, with it. And I've learned a lot. And so I will now uh, 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 give you some, some hints on how I see the, the ocean. When I was a sailor, as all the sailors in the world, I was complaining about the sea blindness. The sailors think that the people like you, the continental people, don't understand what the ocean is. They don't understand what, the, uh, uh, <coughs> uh, what is really in, uh, 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 at stake on the ocean. And both on, in economy or strategy or everything about the ocean, because the ocean is, is far away, you don't see it. It's even difficult to imagine because it's, it's very, uh, very wide, very deep, uh, uh, very uh, um, mysterious. So I will try to, to give you some medics in order to uh, uh, cure your sea blindness. And uh, hope so. And I will do it about uh, uh, with the three uh, angles on the ocean. When, when you are a sailor, you think that the ocean is, uh, is at the center of many things. It's at the center of life. If there had not been oceans thousands, millions of years ago, there would be no life. <coughs> uh, they think that ocean is uh, climate, and I will prove it. I will show you how, how the ocean is uh, the real engine of the climate system, especially if you, if you Keep in mind that the amount of heat which is in, in the atmosphere is the equivalent of the amount of heat which is in the first meters of the ocean. So the real engine for the climate are the oceans. The ocean are food with fish. Something like a billion people on Earth depends on fish, on fishing. To, uh, to eat, to have uh, proteins, the protein they need. Uh, uh, oceans is trade, is uh, a prosperity. Uh, what I have on, on what I wear, uh, my computer, probably uh, a, a large part of what is in this house have been on the ocean at one time or another. Uh, and the ocean is also now uh, data. Most of the data are going through the oceans. And I will have a, a, a few pictures on that. And uh, ocean is nowadays the theater on which the great powers are in competition, as never before, as never during the last decades. So all these reasons point the oceans as a central point of our uh, uh, world and our societies. So I will start with the uh, uh, global warming and the ocean. And I will start with the uh, assessment report number six of IPCC. I'm sure all of you have read that. And uh, for the few of you who have not, I highly recommend to read these 20 pages that are, uh, uh, I think, necessary for every honest uh, uh, human being or uh, uh, student, at least. Uh, and I will pick out of this uh, IPCC R6 uh, report what is related to the oceans. Uh, 
that you may not have uh, 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 noticed. So, um, well, this is the uh, general fact about the climate change, uh, generalized, uh, uh, faster increasing in intensity, and with no recall of such a change in such a, 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 a small amount of years for millions of years. This is due, as you know, to uh, the uh, excess of uh, carbon dioxide. So here is, uh, <coughs> on the at abscess axis, here we are in 1750, and here it's today. And uh, this is uh, in uh, violin, the carbon dioxide uh, 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 concentration in, uh, in the atmosphere. Here is methane and some other gases, and here is pollution. And interestingly enough, you, you can understand that pollution reduces the uh, 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 radiative uh, 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 forcing because pollution is reflecting a part of the uh, incoming uh, solar, uh, 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 <coughs> solar rays. Okay, so this is what, we're, what, we, what we can observe uh, uh, nowadays. And this is what it means for the temperature, so uh, during the last 2,000 years, this is a reconstruction of the average surface temperature. And here in black for the last century and a half, the observed temperature, average surface temperature, which is increasing uh, 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 very dramatically uh, and at a rate unseen for the last 2,000 years. And this is in our AR6, uh, in the, the sixth report, um, a simulation. Well, this is the observation here of the uh, <coughs> surface temperature. And this is a simulation in which all the, uh, 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 <coughs> uh, including all the, natu the natural facts, but excluding all the human factors. And with this simulation, well, it can be seen that uh, uh, there is no impact. So this is one more argument on uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the origin, the human origin of the global warming. Okay, now if we look at the same, the same picture on a, on a larger scale, here is what I've just shown you. The evolution of the temperature during the last 2,000 years. Okay, and here is the, uh, the steep increase that I was talking about. From here, we are 60 million years ago. 60 million years ago, this is the re reconstruction of the temperature. And it, it used to be, so we are 15 degrees uh, 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 warmer than the average temperature before the uh, uh, Industrial Revolution. Okay, and now we are just a few, one degree and a half above the, uh, uh, the temperature uh, during the Industrial Revolution. So you can see that there have been enormous change in this temperature. Uh, and it was more stable during the last million year with uh, uh, a regular shift here between glacial and interglacial periods. And this is just one million years, so this, there is a, a time scale magnification by 40 between here and there. Okay? And now if I concentrate on the last 20,000 years with a time scale magnification of 1,000, I am here. Okay? And what we can see is that there is a, 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 a change in the temperature, the, in the average surface temperature, that is that has no equivalent in all the uh, uh, in this uh, uh, well, not not in the scale, but in uh, the steep of this evolution that is really uh, uh, unseen before. Okay. Um, Something important that is really well explained in the assessment report number six is uh, the uh, the uh, carbon budget, uh, the carbon budget uh, um, concept. Uh, AR6 revealed 
or, or improve the, uh, the assumption that there is a linear uh, uh, correlation between the uh, uh, cumulative CO2 emissions since 1850 and the increase of temperature. Okay, so this is uh, uh, the emissions of CO2 since uh, 1850. We are here, and here are the increase of temperature that we may face. So, if I go here, you can see there, on this bar, this is what have been emitted since the uh, Industrial Revolution, which is uh, 2056 billion tons of CO2. Okay? If we want to uh, uh, um, <coughs> limit the uh, evolution of temperature less than 1.5 degrees, then you can only emit in the following years 400 billion tons of CO2. Okay? Given the fact that every year we emit 40 billion tons, this is just the equivalent of 10 years of our annual emissions. Okay? And if we want to limit the, uh, uh, the excess of temperature to 2 degrees, well, we can release up to and, well, 1150 billion tons of CO2. Which means, seen on the other way, that each ton of CO2 which is released in the atmosphere increase the temperature, the final temperature of the system. Okay? So where do this excess of, uh, uh, of heat goes? As you know, well, you, uh, uh, you're probably familiar with the greenhouse effect. In the greenhouse effect, the solar is emitting uh, 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 rays that with their uh, uh, maximum energy in, uh, in the visible light. Okay? And this visible light can go through our atmosphere and touch the, the surface of the, of the planet, except the blue. The blue is scattered in the sky. This is why we see the blue sky. Okay? But most of this visible light goes down through the atmosphere, if there is no, no cloud, and touch the, uh, the ground. Maybe if, the ground, if you have ice on the ground or, or snow on the ice, you have a reflection. This is called albedo this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, phenomena. But if you go in the water or if you go in the soil, there is an absorption of this, of this uh, uh, heat. And the Earth is remitting some heat. But since the Earth is at 20 degrees, the, the Earth is not, is not emitting rays in the visible light, but in the infrared part of the spectrum. And this infrared light is leaving the Earth, part of it goes in the outer space and part of it is reflected by the greenhouse uh, uh, gases. The more greenhouse gases you have, the more reflection of this infrared heat uh, uh, is reflected down. So it's trapped within the atmosphere. This is, this is the evolution of the... Uh, well, the incoming, incoming solar energy has not changed. We are not closer to the sun. The sun is not shining more intensely. But the way we, uh, our planet is, is getting rid of part of this heat is changing because of the greenhouse effect. Okay? And this... Uh, 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 the, so, the system is not balanced anymore. And the excess of heat is absorbed. It's absorbed just for 1% in the atmosphere. What I've been talking about with the, uh, the change of the surface temperature is just 1% of the heat 
that have been absorbed in the, in the, uh, in the, in the system. Okay, 5% on land, 3% in melting ice, 91% in the ocean. The ocean is absorbing 91% of the heat, of the excess of heat on the planet. The ocean is also absorbing between 25 and 30% of the emission of CO2 we are emitting. This uh, carbon is uh, uh, um, absorbed in the ocean through, uh, uh, well, dissolution, classical uh, 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 physical chemical uh, 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 mechanism, or through photosynthesis by plankton. Okay, and then this plankton dies and, and, and the rest of the plankton goes in other plankton or goes down to, to the bottom of the sea or is dissolved in the ocean. So the ocean is changing due to this forcing, this forcing of heat, this forcing of carbon uh, absorbed by the ocean. Okay, uh, here is the... Uh, 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 the different components that absorb this energy. So, uh, atmosphere, land, ice. Here, the ocean between 0 and 700 meters. Here, the ocean between 700 and 2,000 meters. Here, bit, uh, uh, deeper than 2,000 meters. Although you are economist, you may have some uh, 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 repairs in physics, and you could tell me, how is it possible that the ocean is getting warmer in, uh, at 2,000 meters? Because if I heat something on the surface, well, the, uh, 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 the, uh, the water would be uh, less dense. It would be warmer, it would be less dense, and it will, re it will remain on the surface. Okay? So how is it possible that this heat goes deep into the ocean? And, and, and most of this uh, uh, excess heat uh, uh, absorbed uh, below 700 meters, not only is uh, uh, in the deep ocean, but is around the Antarctic. How is it possible? It's possible because of that. This is, you are used to see the surface currents in the ocean. You know the Gulf Stream, you know the Kuroshio, you know uh, the Humboldt Current, you know uh, Agulas Current, all the currents that are very strong that are in the, in, uh, on the surface of the, of the ocean. But in the deep ocean, there is also uh, 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 a current. So here we are uh, uh, in the Norwegian Sea, here we are in the Antarctic, here is uh, the equator, and so this is something like several thousand kilometers, and, and, and uh, in, uh, uh, here is depth, so it's just six, uh, six kilometers. So it's, it's, uh, there is a, a, a very, uh, the scale is, uh, is not the same on the horizontal and vertical uh, axis. And what you can see, with these arrows, here is what we call uh, uh, the deep convection. Here in the Norwegian Sea, there are some places where the water which is in surface goes down. Generally, it's a, a, a warm, salty water which is transported by the Gulf Stream that goes north, which is getting, uh, uh, which is uh, 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 getting colder and colder due to the atmospheric condition. And then this salty water, which was warm in the surface, becomes very cold and still salty. And it dives. It dives down to the bottom of the ocean. Same thing around the Antarctic. Okay? This is what we call the thermohaline circulation. And I'm sorry, this is not very, very clear, but what you can see in, uh, in red, in red, these are the surface currents, the warm surface currents. This is the, the very uh, uh, schematic uh, view of the Gulf Stream. You should, should have something 
uh, 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 something very uh, similar here, the Kuroshio along uh, Japan. Okay, so this is the, uh, uh, the belt of the surface current. And here, in the Norwegian Sea, this is one place where the water goes down to the bottom. Some other places are here, in the Vedal Sea, and here in the Ross Sea, around the Antarctic. There are not many places around the world where you have these places with deep convection. But this deep convection takes some waters from the surface, which is influenced by the atmospheric condition and goes down to the bottom. And this journey, starting here, going down to the south and going in the Indian Ocean or going in the middle of the Pacific Ocean and then going back to the surface in some places where uh, uh, there is a, a, a phenomenon we call upwelling, this journey lasts 2,000 years. The bottom water in the Pacific have been at the surface 2,000 years ago. So when you put a signal in the water here in the Norwegian Sea today, the signal, the signal of, of an elevation of temperature, an increase of temperature, will stay in the ocean for several thousand years. Okay? Which means that what's happening, that there is an inertia in the ocean, which is huge. And what we, that the ocean will still be changing, moving, evolving during centuries and more. Under the, uh, under the, uh, 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 the evolution of the uh, climate system. So today, uh, what we see with the uh, uh, highest, higher concentration in CO2, well, it's uh, the highest concentration that we've ever seen for the last two million years. Uh, we see the uh, sea level rising at a, a, a pace uh, which hasn't been seen for the, the last three uh, thousand years. Uh, the ice sheet is uh, shrinking and uh, the Arctic coverage is uh, uh, at its smallest uh, size for the last thousand years. The IPCC expect more heat waves, more heavy rain, more drought, more atmospheric condition appropriate for intense fires, and warming, acidification, and lack of oxygen in the ocean. In the global warming, there are two things. There are the, uh, the raising of the average temperature, and there is uh, uh, the frequency of extreme uh, a phenomenon that will uh, increase also. And uh, if in there, uh, if you, for example, for a phenomenon like heat waves uh, that used to be seen once every 10 years, they will be seen one every year in a, a scenario of uh, plus, uh, plus two degrees. But if you go to scenarios like plus four degrees, uh, uh, phenomena that are seen once uh, 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 every century would be annual. So there is this uh, uh, intense event that, uh, uh, that, we'll, uh, that uh, uh, we'll have to face. Uh, so this is a, a, <coughs> a resume of what will happen in the ocean. Uh, well, read the AR6 to, to, to have the whole picture. Uh, uh, sea level, I will, I will come on that uh, uh, a few, uh, in a few minutes. Species are uh, going north, so this will have an impact on uh, fishing, on, uh, on the zone where it's possible to fish, and probably on the abundance of the, uh, of the fish and every, every living organism in the ocean. Uh, ocean heat content, I, I talked about that, and, uh, and you already know everything that, we, that is uh, happening to corals uh, that are uh, uh, suffering from heat waves, uh, ocean heat, heat waves, and corals with their uh, uh, unique biodiversity uh, are uh, uh, in peril. Uh, ocean acidification. Because the ocean is absorbing carbon, 
the pH of the ocean is changing, is decreasing by 0.02 every decade. The ocean is becoming more acid. And, well, you, 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 you can swim even in a more acid ocean, but the, uh, 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 the shells, uh, it will have an impact on the shells. It would have an impact on their, on their shell, on the thickness on their, uh, of everything which is made with calcium will be affected by this change of, of pH. Okay, and even in some uh, algae, small, very small alga, they will have an impact on the way they can develop and the way they can multiply and the way they can absorb CO2 by photosynthesis. Okay, now I will, I will, I will concentrate on sea level rise. Uh, the sea level rise is due to several things. It's due to the expansion of the ocean. If the ocean is warmer, uh, uh, the, 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 it will take more place just like when you heat some, uh, 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 um, some air, uh, it's the volume occupied by, uh, uh, by um, is larger. So the expansion of the ocean uh, is uh, one factor. Uh, the melting of the glaciers, the melting of Greenland and uh, Antarctica. This is, these are the main factors for the elevation of the, of the sea level. Um, we can observe that uh, uh, during the last 100 years, the elevation of the, the sea level was one millimeter a year at the beginning of the 20th century, uh, two millimeters a year in the 70s, and we are now at almost four millimeters a year. And it will increase. And uh, AR6 uh, uh, make an assumption that, well, uh, a prediction that the elevation in uh, 21, uh, 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 by the end of this century, will be one meter. One meter. One meter is not that much. But as you remember, uh, uh, there is a strong inertia in the, uh, in the ocean. And if you look in the, uh, uh, deeper in uh, the IPCC report, they go beyond uh, uh, 2000. They go in 20, in 2,000 years, in the uh, uh, assumption of a, uh, a rise of two, just two degrees, the elevation of the sea level will be six meters. Okay, and in 10,000 years, it will be 13 meters. So what is in the ocean will impact our societies. Not, not today, but in many centuries. What is happening today will have an impact for centuries. And if you, if you go to a, a, a more dramatic assumption of plus three, it's 10 meters in 2,000 years, and it's 24 meters in 10,000 years. Which, as economists, you may think about uh, the price of, uh, of uh, protecting the, the coastal areas, protecting the towns, Moving them, moving them uh, uh, inside the land. Not today, not in the following century, but uh, in the long term of our civilizations. What shows also AR6 is that uh, uh, the, uh, the warming won't be the same all over the, uh, all over the planet. There are some places where it will be stronger and some other places where it will be uh, 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 smoother. Well. The Arctic, the Arctic is one of the uh, uh, places which is the most affected by, uh, by, this, uh, uh, by the changes of, uh, in the climate. Uh, the Med Sea also. The Med Sea and all the countries around the Med Sea. So this is for temperature and this is for uh, uh, rainfall. They have a, an, uh, a site where you can see uh, region by region what will be the impact of the uh, uh, under the different assumptions of plus 1.5, plus 2, plus, plus 4? Okay? Huh? Uh, yes, yes. Uh -uh. Okay? So the ocean is changing. 
and the ocean will keep changing for the next hundreds and thousands of years. It will impact our societies, it will impact our way of life, uh, it will change the way we live on our coastlines, it will change the services given by the ocean, fishing, biodiversity, climate regulation, but it may offer protection. There are still a question mark on that. Uh, uh, it may be possible that if the temperature still or, or the CO2 still increase in the atmosphere, it, it may be possible that the capability of the ocean to absorb 25 to 30% of CO2 will decrease. It's not sure, but it's one hypothesis, which will in return accelerate the global warming. My second point on the ocean is not related to climate, it's related to trade and to sea lines of communication and to the fact that uh, 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 before COVID-19 at least, uh, maybe COVID-19 will change things, but uh, we were in an era of globalization, of uh, a, 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 um, a deep change in the way we were predicting things. And this uh, big change is related to maritimization, to the fact that more and uh, a larger and larger part of the trade which is made on the uh, on our planet goes on the sea and these are the, the sea lines of communications these are uh, just an aggregation of all the position reported by the ships on the uh, uh, on the ocean every six seconds every ship report where where uh, where it is okay so you can see that uh, there is uh, some places on the ocean where there is nobody and some places where uh, you have a lot of people. These are the sea lines of communication. Okay? And you can see that the, the, the sea lines of communication goes in some places in, in some choke points here. The straits. Who control the straits, who control the sea lines of communication, control the trade. Okay? And there are not, not that much these, these uh, 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 choke points. Here is the Malacca Strait, Cape Comorin here, the Ormuz Strait, Babel Mandeb, Suez, Gibraltar, here the, uh, the channel, uh, the Panama Channel, okay, and, uh, and the Cape of Good Hope. Um, when the uh, British Empire was uh, at its uh, uh, highest uh, uh, expansion, well, you, the uh, <coughs> the British Empire had a base in Gibraltar, uh, they had one, uh, they were uh, occupying Egypt, they had a base in Aden, uh, they were in India, they were in Singapore, and they were, well, for centuries, they were uh, close to the chalk points. But that's not my point, I, I, I'm not going back on in history. Uh, but I want to insist on the, the change of the world that have been, uh, well, the evolution of the world under the maritime, uh, maritimization. Uh, every year, 10 billion tons of freight are transported uh, uh, on the ocean, which represent 80 to 90% in volume of, uh, of all the exchanges. Uh, <coughs> the tools of these exchanges are ships, 50,000 ships in the world, and these ships are making port visits, 5 million and 700,000 port visits, where they go and they charge food or they, they charge uh, 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 goods and uh, they discharge them some other places. This uh, uh, maritime traffic accounts for 3.5 percent of uh, CO2 emissions. And uh, if I look in some uh, uh, in a famous uh, uh, choke points. So here we are between uh, England and France, uh, exactly where uh, 26 uh, migrants uh, uh, lost their life uh, two days ago, uh, uh, frozen in the, uh, in the, in the Northern Sea uh, uh, cold water. And uh, in this area between uh, France and England, seven to, seven to 800 ships are going every day. They are crossing either uh, uh, from uh, 
uh, from the south to the, uh, to the north or across the channel to go to, uh, to England or France and add to that some fishing activity. Okay, you can compare that to the Malacca Strait where 200 ships are uh, sailing every day in Suez Canal 50, Panama Canal uh, 40. So where do they go? Where do they come from, all these ships? They go from, uh, 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 well, ports. And the hierarchy of the ports in the world have been changed uh, uh, very, uh, on a uh, very important way in the last uh, decades. These are, in blue, the 10 largest ports in the world. And in yellow, the, uh, the French port. So you, you can see that the French port are very small compared to the, uh, uh, to the main port in the world. In the 10 port in the world, just one, just one is out of Asia. It's Rotterdam. Rotterdam is here. All the other ports are in Asia. Among all the ports that are in Asia, two are not in China. Busan, in Korea, which is here, and Singapore, here. The seven other ports in uh, the ten first ports in the world are in China, which was not the case 20 years ago or 30 years ago. This is a, 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 a change in the world economy. And you can see that here in uh, the density of the sea line of communication here in the South China Sea and uh, around the world, China and Japan. No. <coughs> Among these uh, uh, exchanges, one of the uh, uh, um, most important uh, 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 tool used is container. The container have been invented in the US in the 60s and, uh, and their, uh, their use is, uh, is uh, blooming here between uh, year 2000 and today. Uh, in 2000 there were 200 million tons of, uh, uh, of a container that were uh, uh, exchanged in the world and now we are at 800. So it has been multiplied by four in 20 years. And here are the containers. So they have been multiplied by four in 20 years, but they are not the largest, uh, 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 even though they are very significant and that they are always uh, uh, cited as uh, an example of maritimization. Well, the, uh, um, this is uh, 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 Le Vrac, comment on dit Le Vrac? Uh, uh, well, General goods like uh, uh, wheat or uh, uh, is still larger than container, and this is oil, oil and gas. Bulk. Huh? Bulk. Bulk. Okay, bulk goods. COVID has uh, had, had a, a, a very large impact on uh, on uh, on uh, <coughs> the maritime traffic, and uh, with a concentration on. Uh, <coughs> on the largest port, like Al Jazeera, Piraeus, uh, Antwerp, Shanghai, Singapore, Ningbo, Los Angeles. Uh, the cost of uh, transporting a container have uh, uh, rocketed from $2,000 to 12, more than $12,000. Before COVID-19, it was cheaper to transport a container from Shanghai to Marseille than from Marseille to Lyon. Okay, now it's, it's not the case anymore. And, and it, it, well, and we don't know how it will evolve because the, there is a lack of empty container in Asia and an excess of them in Europe. Uh, we have traffic jam in some US and European ports. I've read this morning that uh, the US Navy, the military Navy uh, in uh, Los Angeles and San Diego has, this morning they, they, they announced that they opened the ports to, to uh, 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 to reduce the uh, maritime jam uh, of the uh, the Californian uh, coast, 
and there is an increasing tension between logistician ship owners and uh, uh, port uh, uh, port uh, uh, officials and uh, the uh, the strong people are uh, the ship owners today okay they will probably this will probably have an impact on uh, the organization of maritime traffic uh, maybe will uh, 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 provoke extra calls extra uh, uh, port visits will raise the cost of the transport of the maritime transport and maybe uh, raise the question of new regulation for the maritime traffic and I, I, I will continue on this uh, uh, more economic domain about data and about the uh, 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 the cables so this is an example of a cable the, these cables are uh, just put on the bottom of the ocean and uh, they are very very well uh, uh, charted you can go on the internet and you can see rather precisely where they are they are laid in the ocean with uh, some ships uh, that are specialized to, to lay cables so this this the size of this uh, system is something like 30 meters and with this uh, huge system you can uh, put on the bottom of the of the ocean thousands of kilometers of uh, uh, of cables and this is the uh, uh, the array of submarine cables all over the world okay there are not so many there are not so many between uh, between Europe and uh, and the US there are something like 20 cables and the cables were laid down at a time where uh, the philosophy of the uh, 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 cyberspace was very uh, uh, was looking for openness for uh, uh, freedom for no frontier and so they are not very well protected and if you consider that well it depends where your data are stored but if your data are stored on the other side of the uh, of the ocean then you are dependent upon these uh, these cables and many people think that uh, 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 data are going to the space and to uh, 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 satellite but for example if you call if you if you call someone on the other side of the world uh, uh, generally you don't feel any you don't have to wait to, to have the answer of the people of the person you're, you're talking with you call to India or to Australia you talk like like if the person was in front of you which means that the signal is going very fast from where you are France to Australia which means that the distance is small if the signal had to go up to a, a geostationary satellite 36,000 kilometers uh, 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 in the outer space go down and then from Australia back to the uh, to, to the satellite and then go back down it will take not that much time but enough for you to notice that there is a, 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 a delay between your question and the answer when there is no delay it means that your voice has been through a submarine cable the signal of your, uh, your voice has been digitalized, it has been cut in small packets uh, and this, uh, 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 this data has been through the, uh, the cables and uh, reassembled on the other side and went in the ear of, uh, of the person you're talking with. Okay, so this is, this is something which is, uh, 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 I would say, a, a matter of concern. Uh, uh, last week, the Norwegian announced that uh, uh, they had an oceanographic system, survey system in the north of uh, Norway, and all the uh, all the, the uh, sensors were linked with a submarine cable, and and suddenly the system was not working anymore, and they went to the sea, and they realized that three kilometers of the cable had disappeared. They don't know where. They don't know where. 
Well, they're looking for the fish that have uh, stolen the, uh, uh, the, the, the three kilometers uh, cable. But uh, uh, some, some tools have been developed to, to, to go very deep to, uh, uh, to maybe to, to operate around the cables or, or, or on the floor of the ocean. So this is a, a, a submarine which is made of uh, titanium bubbles. Uh, in this bubble there is a nuclear reactor and uh, this bubble uh, make this uh, uh, submarine very resistant to pressure. It can go down to 1,000 meters or more. And as you can see, it has here some uh, 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 arms to operate on the bottom of the ocean. Okay, so some people think that this kind of submarine may be interested in, uh, in uh, 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 monitoring and uh, maybe repairing or maybe acting close to the uh, submarine cables. And as you see, so this is this is this kind of uh, of submarine, and and they used to be uh, uh, transported by another submarine, bigger one. Probably not an easy task to uh, go to the parking uh, uh, place and uh, and <coughs> and get under the, the the big submarine. Okay. So this a uh, few uh, uh, presentation. This this points to show you that our economies are highly dependent on the oceans, that the traffic, maritime traffic has exploded during the last 20 years, uh, allowing a, a new organization of production, that people now are thinking about this organization and are thinking that it's very expensive in CO2, it's very expensive in employment, it's, it has uh, a lot of drawbacks, and uh, I think many people are thinking about uh, 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 evolving uh, uh, this uh, system and that digital traffic and data relies on submarine cables which are highly vulnerable. And now I will change and I will go on uh, my last point which is the uh, great power competition on the ocean. Why on the ocean? Why the, uh, well, great power or regional power or power competition in the ocean? Why on the oceans? Because, because, uh, because of the law of the sea. United Nations Convention for the Law of the Sea, which is the international law of the sea, UNCLOS. UNCLOS was uh, uh, um, <coughs> decided in a convention in Montego Bay, in Jamaica, in uh, 1982, 40 years ago. And it, it's a balance. It's a balance between two, uh, 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 <coughs> two positions. These were the, uh, uh, the great power at that time. They wanted freedom of navigation. They want to go everywhere on the world, in the world. And these were the developing countries at that time. They wanted to have frontiers on the ocean. They wanted to, to protect uh, uh, the, the stock of fish, they wanted to protect their possible uh, 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 oil or gas resources. And uh, so these people wanted to have some uh, territorialization, frontiers in the ocean. And these guys wanted to have an open ocean. And the Montego Bay Convention ended up with an equilibrium between the, uh, the, the two requests. And this is how the, uh, the ocean is organized uh, from uh, the low, well, according to the law of the sea. Here is the, uh, the shoreline. So first, there are rights. A country have rights on the ocean if, a, if uh, this country is a, a, a riparian to the, to the, uh, to the ocean, okay? Then, starting at the, at the shoreline, uh, here is the territorial water. Territorial waters are 12 nautical miles large, which is something like 20 kilometers. If you go on a boat, on a ship, and you leave the shoreline, you sail during one hour, one hour later you will be out of the territorial water. So, which is rather thin uh, area. 
Okay? Within these territorial waters, the, uh, uh, the riparian country have almost total sovereignty. It's almost like if it's his own uh, uh, territory. Okay? All the laws can be applied here. The laws of the country can be applied here. Okay? Further away, it's not the case anymore. Further away, we enter in the exclusive economic zone. In the exclusive economic zone, the exclusive economic zone goes to 200 nautical miles, which is uh, uh, 360 kilometers. If you sail from the shoreline and you go straight forward, one day later you will be out of the eco exclusive economic zone. Okay, so one hour here, one day here. In the exclusive economic zone, the country which is here has the exclusivity on fishing. If someone fishes in the EEZ, well, it needs to have the authorization of the, uh, of the riparian country. He has the exclusivity on uh, 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 drilling, and, and uh, using the, uh, the bottom of the sea to look for gas, oil, and uh, uh, rare earth, and things like that. Okay, so these are the, uh, 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 the rights of the riparian country. But if another country wants to go there with a, uh, or a, a merchant ship, or a military ship, or anything, it can go through the, the uh, exclusive economic zone without asking any permission. Okay? And further away, well, I, I skip this. Further away, uh, this is international waters. In international waters, there is no rule except the rule of the flag of the ship. That's that's the, uh, 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 well, roughly. There are many other things, but roughly. Uh, uh, well, if, if I have a, a French flag in, uh, uh, behind my ship, well, then the law of, the, it's the law of France, which applies on the ship. Okay? So, which allows, for example, this is a famous French uh, uh, sailing race called Vendée Globe, which starts from uh, 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 a port called uh, Les Sables d'Olonne. And uh, this uh, race goes all around the world. It lasts several months. But during this race, the skippers, they start from France, they go all around the world, they go back to France, they don't cross any frontier. They don't, they don't have to show a passport at any time. They don't go in a custom office. It's freedom of navigation. You can go all around the world without asking the permission to anyone. You can do that with a, with a, a racing boat, you can do that with a merchant ship, you can do that with a military ship. So this is why this kind of ships, uh, this, is a, 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 uh, this is a Russian submarine, this is a, a, an American uh, aircraft carrier, a Chinese one and a French one. These ships, like, like the sailing boat, they can go all around the world without asking the permission to anyone. This is why when there is a, a, a confrontation, when there is a, a, a political race between two countries, the ocean are a natural theater just to show how you're big and how you're powerful and, uh, and uh, how you want to, 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 be, uh, uh, <coughs> to have an impact on uh, the way the world is, uh, is running. Okay? So this is why in several places all over the world, I will, I will show you, you have a raising tension between navies. Another interest is, well, we have already seen this map, is uh, the, the possibility to control or prevent 
uh, um, the, the traffic in this, uh, uh, along the sea lines of communications or in the choke points. For example, you may have heard uh, uh, that uh, there, had, uh, there have been several attacks here of tankers uh, close to, to the Ormu Strait. And so, or pirate, pirates attack here uh, along uh, Somalia, it was 10 years ago. So you still have uh, uh, um, <coughs> Navy ships there patrolling to prevent the return of the pirates. And these ships around uh, the, uh, the Horn of Africa in Somalia, they come from France, they come from space, from Spain, from Italy, from the US, from Pakistan, from India, from China, from Japan. Uh, it's international. And all these countries are gathering their uh, uh, means to uh, uh, prevent the return of piracy. But they could use this uh, freedom of navigation to go around the Horn of Africa just to provoke or confront or compete between them. Okay, some, some places that will change or that will, uh, where you have tensions. Where here, I wouldn't say there is tensions. Uh, uh, but as I mentioned, the, the, uh, the Arctic ice sheet is uh, uh, reducing very fast. And now it's clear that in a few decades, uh, the maritime traffic will, will go through the Arctic. Well, some maritime traffic will go through the Arctic. And uh, you can compare the, the distance between uh, uh, Yokohama and London is uh, 13 uh, 13,000 kilometers uh, through uh, the, the Arctic Sea when it's uh, 21,000 kilometers through the Malacca Strait. So it represents a, a, a big change, but, but uh, uh, the idea is not only to go from Yokohama to London as fast as possible. It may be to go from Yokohama to London and stopping regularly in uh, in uh, uh, Mumbai, in uh, Dubai, in Piraeus, in uh, Algeciras, before going to London. Today, the, the maritime lines are organized uh, uh, from hubs to hubs. And it's not a straight line going through uh, uh, the Arctic Sea. So there will probably be some traffic going through the Arctic, but I'm, I will not bet that it will uh, 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 divert the majority of the traffic going through the Malacca Strait. Okay. So another place a lot of people are, are, are talking about is uh, the South China Sea, uh, where all the countries around the uh, South China Sea are claiming sovereignty on uh, the islands. Um, the South China Sea is bigger than the, the Med Sea. So it's a, a, a big piece of, uh, of, uh, of sea. And here uh, in, uh, in green is what the Chinese government called the, uh, the Nan, uh, uh, Nan, uh, Nan Dash Line, La Ligne à Neuf Trait, or uh, the uh, La langue de boeuf, the beef tongue. And, uh, and the Chinese government, as well as the Taiwanese government, uh, uh, claim sovereignty in everything which is within this uh, uh, green, uh, green line. And the other countries around uh, uh, do not agree. And they say that first, uh, uh, you can have sovereignty on a piece of water if you are a riparian country. So you have to measure, you have to, to, your sovereignty starts at your shoreline and can be extended to territorial waters and exclusive economic zone. And, and but that, for example, here, you are very far from the shoreline from China and you're closer to, for example, Bonnet. And so this should be in, uh, 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 these waters should be on the sovereignty and the sovereignty of Brunei, okay? And uh, so all the countries which are involved in these uh, disputes are China, Vietnam, Philippines, Malaysia, and Brunei. 
the, 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 the dots here represent the, uh, the nationality of the troops that are in the different islands. So the, the green dots are islands occupied by Chinese troops and, uh, and here in violet they are from uh, Vietnam and so on. Okay. <coughs> uh, in 2016 there was a, a, <coughs> a tribunal in uh, an international uh, uh, tribunal in uh, La Haye in uh, uh, Den Hagen in uh, the Netherlands that was <coughs> uh, that was uh, seized by Philippines around the uh, the claim of the Chinese claim, and this international tribunal uh, uh, gave reason to the Philippines, but China uh, uh, replied that this was uh, uh, <coughs> void and null. So the tension is still rising in this uh, in this uh, area, and all these countries have not yet find a. Uh, uh <coughs> an agreement or even a way to find an agreement. Um, okay, so this is the sort of, of, of phenomenon that, that can be seen. And uh, so this is in, uh, uh, in the Philippines. So this, uh, this is a coral reef in the Philippines and these are uh, uh, Chinese fishermen that are at anchor uh, near to this uh, coral reef just to claim the sovereignty of China on, uh, on this uh, coral reef. Okay, they are not fishing a lot, and, uh, but they, are, uh, uh, they have a very strong position of this, uh, of this coral reef. Some, another example is here in uh, some other coral reefs, so the Fury Cross Reef, you can see in 2009 how it was. Uh, <coughs> Even not even an island, and how it has been uh, engineered now to be a, a military base with an airfield of three three uh, kilometers long, and uh, the capability to uh, to host uh, military ships. Okay, so this is the competition between the the countries in this uh, area, and uh, and which implies uh, some other countries like the U.S. and like France uh, that send. France sends regularly ships in this area just to, uh, uh, um, to uh, uh, support the, uh, the argument that we need to respect the international law. And if you don't respect the international law, then the strongest will impose its uh, uh, will to, uh, to the others. Another place where you have tensions that have been, uh, it's uh, in the Eastern Med. And so this is the Eastern Mediterranean, the exclusive economic zone in the Eastern Med, uh, seen by uh, Greece. Uh, <coughs> um, so this is a, a, very, a very large EEZ, including all these islands that are close to the uh, Turkish shorelines, and uh, that are especially here, that have been uh, 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 attributed to Greece, to Greece uh, after World War I and World War II. So this is how uh, <coughs> Greece see uh, this, this area and this is how Turkey see the same area <coughs> and Turkey's, uh, uh, the Turkish point of view is that the, uh, the Greek EEZ is uh, uh, west of Crete and all this area is, uh, belongs to Turkey. And not only this area, but also around uh, Cyprus. As you know, Cyprus is divided in two parts, the Turkish part in the north, and, uh, and uh, uh, the, not the Greek part, but uh, the part that is recognized by the international community in the south. And here in green is what uh, uh, Turkey is claiming for the northern part of the island. So an EEZ that goes down to the south of Cyprus. Okay, China, I talked, uh, I talked before for the South China Sea, had signed the Montego Bay. Turkey has not. Because for Turkey, the question of the agency, the question of the Doneganes Island was uh, 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 <coughs> uh, <coughs> uh, 
crucial, was important. So th they did not sign. But today, <coughs> you may hear regularly in, in the media some uh, 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 tension and some uh, uh, mm, provocation between Greeks and Turks, between French and Turks uh, 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 in the past years. And so there is, uh, there is a, a growing tension that everybody would like to see uh, going down through uh, uh, a juridical uh, uh, mechanism. Uh, well, I already talked about Oman and the attack uh, about in Oman. So this, uh, this <coughs> ocean, as I told you, was... Uh, uh, is a theater which is very easy for the power competition, very easy to, 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 to use for the power competition. If you are on land and if you want to provoke your neighbor, you have to cross the frontier. If you cross the frontier, it's an aggression, it's war. When you are on the water, you can send your ships on the other side of the world and you can make you can provoke, you can, you can uh, 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 be present and you can put some pressure without any aggression. You have not crossed the level of aggression. So this is why the ocean are today very uh, uh, useful for this uh, uh, affirmation of power. Using gray zone techniques, the, the gray zone technique means that uh, Either, well, you always stay below the level of aggression or below the level of attribution. When you send fishermen in front of an island, you can say it's, it's just the fishermen who are acting. I'm not responsible for the fishermen. It's not an aggression. Okay, and if you make an aggression, you stay below the level above which your, uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the other part will react. For example, you may remember that 10 years ago there was a, 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 a Korean frigate, frigate that was torpedoed by a North Korean uh, submarine. But there was no proof that there was a North Korean submarine. And in the end, there was no retaliation. So they stayed below the, the level of attribution. Uh, the aggressiveness at sea is, is raising. Uh, there is a naval arm race, vertical, with more and more sophisticated uh, 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 systems, and horizontal. <coughs> I mean that uh, um, some systems or weapons that used to be uh, <coughs> in the arsenal of states, some of these systems and weapons are now in the hands of organizations, non-state organizations, organization like Hezbollah <coughs> or like the Houthis in Yemen. They have anti-ship missiles. It was not the case uh, uh, just a few years ago. This is the horizontal uh, 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 arm race. And I think there is a real danger of miscalculation between uh, during all these uh, encounters at, at sea with more and more aggressiveness. So I hope you will remind that the ocean is central for climate, it's central for food, central for the economy, central for data, it's control central for the coastal regions that will experience in the following centuries a, a, a very deep uh, a change and it's central in the power competition. It's a theater for the power competition. This is why the United Nations have uh, uh, opened a decade for the ocean sciences for sustainable development. Uh, that in New York there are discussion for the BBNG which is biodiversity beyond national jurisdiction. What can we do out of the EEZ, what, we, what can we do to protect, because there is no, it belongs to everyone, so what can we do to protect biodiversity far from the shorelines? And this is why our president decided to organize a one ocean summit in Brest in February.
and thank you for your attention. <clears throat>